Welcome back for another live tutorial. Today we are going to be having some pattern fun in Procreate as we learn how to draw some really fun, colorful bugs. Um, and I'm really excited about this tutorial. It's a lot of like play with shapes and patterns and colors and it's just fun. So um, we are gonna be using my new Imperfect Patterns brush set that I just released. Um, it is 32 brushes. And they're all these hand-drawn patterns that just repeat seamlessly forever, but they have all these really great imperfections to them. So they still have that hand-drawn you know, element to them and they make your work have a lot of personality and they're just super fun. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about them. Um, there's 31 patterns and then there's also the Imperfect Inker Brush, which is what, whoops, is what you can use to draw. Um, and it's the same brush that I actually use to draw a lot of the patterns. So it pairs really well. Um, I'll show you this piece that I drew, which I used only that, only the Imperfect Patterns brush set. I used the Imperfect Inker to draw all the shapes. And then I used patterns to fill in like, you know, grass and the tent and here and the stars and the tree and like pretty much anywhere there's a pattern, like I use that. Um, so I really like that piece. And here's just kind of like a before and after, you know, plain and boring. And then here's with all the fun patterns. I've got a lot of like, um, stuff or surfaces like bricks and rocks and things like that and leaves another before and after um like trees and you know this one's like i made uh, a scales and it works really well for like a roof <laughs> Um, and then there's also a user guide. Um, I make these really in-depth user guides for my products that I'm really, really proud of. This one is 40 pages. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of really great info in there. Um, there is even a step-by-step um, -step tutorial where we, you draw this little sailboat and you use all the patterns and it's really awesome. But let's get back to what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started drawing. Um, before we uh, jump into Procreate, I just want to let you know if you're having any questions, um, feel free to put them into the chat and Jeff will ask me or he'll, uh, Jeff is here. Hi, say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, Jeff is my husband. He's running um, the chat and all the like production and behind the scenes stuff. Um, so if you have questions about what I'm drawing, feel free to ask them and he'll shout them out to me as needed. And then if you have like general Q&A, just about like art, other Procreate stuff, we'll do a Q&A at the end. So Feel free to ask away. Let's go. Whoa, almost dropped my pen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Procreate. And I'm gonna start by creating a new canvas. So I'm gonna tap the plus sign in the upper right. And the size that I'm gonna be using today is 2800 by 3500 pixels. This is a vertically oriented canvas. I save, um, these are kind of my two common sizes. I, I, I very often use the 3800 by 2800 for my like horizontal, but today we're going vertical. So again, that is 2800 by 3500 pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And then I'm going to head to my brushes and I'm gonna go to the Imperfect Patterns brush set. And I'm gonna start with the Imperfect Inker. And this brush is, I'll just show you, it's just like an inker with lots of texture. Again, that's what I use to do a lot of the patterns, so it works really well. Um, I've got my size to about 30% or so. And let's start with the color. So I'm gonna go over to my colors and I'm gonna start with just kind of like an orangey red, something along that, those lines right there. And Okay, let's start in this little quadrant over here. I'm gonna draw kind of like um, like an oval kind of shape. The cool thing about bugs is you can like put just about any shape together and it can be a bug if you like put some wings on it and a head and some legs. <laughs> so you don't have to be like accurate or anything like that. Just have fun with shapes. So that's kind of like a circle-y shape. Um, and now let's go over here and I'll do another one. I think I'll switch to like, like a blue, maybe like a lighter blue like that. And you can always adjust colors as you go, but I'm gonna do like a skinny body for this one. So just kind of like an oval shape like that. And then I'm just gonna fill it in with color drop. I didn't say, I kind of did it fast, sorry guys. <laughs> so uh, you make a closed shape and as long as the shape is completely closed, you can grab this little circle and drag it inside and then just drop it and it'll fill in with color drop. 
Um, I think I'll make the body kind of wider towards the top like that. There we go. And maybe I'll make it a little pointer at the bottom. You can totally do whatever you want. Okay, let's do another one down here. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna grab kind of like a yellowish green. So I'm gonna go over here between yellow and green. Not super saturated. I'm gonna kind of go down a little bit. So about right there in my colors. And then I'm going to draw, we'll do another like long shape for this one too. Just like a little oval like that. And then I'll fill that in. And then one more over here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another like bigger body. So a big body over here, and I'm gonna choose like a really fun kind of like magenta purple color. So I'm over here kind of in magenta. And I think I'll do something like that. Yeah, I think that's good. So not super saturated. And then this one, I'm gonna do like kind of like a beetle. So I'm gonna do like a, like a long semicircle. <laughs> so like a line and then a curvy shape, like a U. And then I'll fill that in. Okay, so those are our first shapes. Um, so once you get kind of these first shapes drawn, we're gonna draw all the shapes and then we're gonna move on to adding pattern. So we're gonna actually create a new layer now. Um, so go up here to the layers panel, these little two squares, and then you're gonna tap this little plus sign and create a new layer. And now let's go back to this one and we'll add some like ladybug wings. So I'm gonna choose another green, kind of similar to this one, maybe. Maybe a little cooler, I don't know. Let me see how that looks. Looks pretty good, okay. And then I'm gonna draw two like half circles. They're gonna go like this. Oops, you make sure it's a closed shape. Ha, ah. there we go. And then I'll draw one more there. And because we put these on their own layer, we can go back and add pattern to all the shapes. Um, if these were on the same layer, we wouldn't be able to go back and add pattern to this orange shape. So I think this is a little too saturated. So I'm just gonna just play around, lighten it up just a little bit. So I'm just like dropping a new color right on top of it. And you can also, if you wanna like clean up a shape, you can go over here to the eraser. And if you tap and hold it, it will select this same brush. So that I've got the imperfect inker as my eraser. You know, if you wanted these to not be so pointy, or if you wanted the corners to be a little pointier, you can always do that, okay? All right, let's do this guy over here. I think I'll do another ruddy orange kind of color. Maybe something like that. So there's the color that I'm choosing. It's kind of red-orange, but not all the way to the, the side of this disc. And then let's do some, like, Mm, triangular wings. Again, you can do whatever shapes you want. I'll do like a triangle and then I'll like curve the bottom. So line down, line out, and then kind of curve the bottom like that. And then I'll fill those in with color drop. So drag, drop. Oh, there's a great question. Should we be doing these shapes on their own layer? Yes. So. Um, I, as you can see, I have these first shapes on a layer, and then now I've got these like wings on their own layer right above it. So basically any shape that touches another shape, you want it to be on its own layer. So we'll probably end up using quite a bit of layers to do this because we have a lot of like layer or shapes that touch other shapes. So um, I'll, I'll try to show you guys when I um, do new layers. So um, let's go to this one down here. And I think I'm gonna add I kind of want to add a second color to it before I put the wings on, so I'll just do that on this layer. I'm just going to select this color, so I'm going to put a finger down and just go over that to select that color with the eyedropper. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose like a darker version of it. Maybe even darker than that. Sometimes it's good to test it. Like I think that looks good, so I'll undo that with a two finger tap and then I'll just draw right over the top like that. There we go. And then fill that in. So now that one will have like a two-tone look. And now let's go to this guy. And I think I'll start with this purple color. So I'm gonna select this purple color. 
And then I'm going to choose something that's lighter, but also a little warmer. So I'm gonna go up on the, um, the ring, the color ring here, until I get like a, maybe go like a peachy pink almost. Let me go, view. there we go. Cool, so almost at like three o'clock there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna draw another like line and then kind of like a, another kind of half circle shape and fill that in. I think it's a little bit big. So I'm gonna do it again. Oh, that's too small. Don't you love undo? You'd be like, eh, I didn't like that. And then just undo it and do it again. And then I'll just erase if I didn't. If I still think it's a little too big on this side, I can just erase a little bit. There we go. Looking pretty good. I think I'll sharpen these wings up a little bit. Just kind of do that. You can always go in and touch up your shapes however you need to. Okay, so we're done with that layer. So we're gonna go ahead and add another layer now because we need some heads and we need some other details. So I'm gonna go up to the layers menu and I'm gonna tap the plus sign. So I'm creating a third layer now. So we have three. One is the bodies, one is the next layer of shapes. <laughs> and now we have a third layer. So let's start here. I'm gonna give this one a head. So for that, I'm gonna do like a, maybe a deeper purple. So I'm kind of still in the magenta realm, but I'm going darker. So, you know, this is like a cooler purple, but I'm like doing a warmer purple, like there. And then let's do just like a half circle head. Kind of like that. Super simple. And then fill it in. It's a little lopsided, but that's okay. I'm gonna just add some more to it. And if you think it's like a little too big, like you can always adjust things, whoops. Okay, <laughs> you can go up here to the selection tool and just draw a little circle around it like that. And then go to the transform tool and then just move it around and resize it. Okay, uh, let's give this one a head. I think I'll do like a teal, like a dark teal kind of blue green color. I think that one's pretty good. So I'm right here between blue and green and you know, halfway down, <laughs> not quite over to the edge. And then we'll do another kind of head like that. Oops, I actually made a little mark right there. Cool, I like that. And then we'll go up to, or down to this one. And I think this one's ready to get some wings. So let's choose, let's choose a, a cooler blue. I'm gonna do a cooler blue. Um, so, and you might be wondering like how I'm able to select these colors so quickly. <laughs> it's because I practiced this drawing. I've done it a few times so that I can teach you guys, but really it's about experimentation. When I first did this piece to, to try and like figure out what I wanted to do for this tutorial, um, I experimented with color a lot and I don't often use like these purple colors in my work, but I really love the way that it looked with these, this green, like this is kind of a new color palette for me. And I, and because I experimented, um, I was able to discover that. So if you don't like the way the colors are looking, you can adjust them, you can drop in a new color. Um, you can also go to, let me see, you can go to the adjustments menu, hue, saturation, brightness. Show that again, hue, saturation, brightness. It's the first one. And you can just change the colors on the fly by sliding this or changing the saturation or brightness. So feel free to experiment and play with the colors um, to get them looking good to your eye. All right, let's give this guy some wings. So again, I've got a blue and I'm gonna do, I'll do some straight lines coming out this way. I like that. Oops, maybe that. And then I'm gonna do like a curving line up. So this one's, these ones have like, are kind of more flat on the edges and this one's gonna be more curvy. Like that. And oh, hold on. So if this happens to you, <laughs> it could be a couple of things. Um, you can see it right here, it's not quite closed. So you gotta draw that in, make sure your shape is really closed. Um, the other thing, if your color is flooding out everywhere is you can adjust your color drop threshold. If you drag this 
and you hold it, then you have this bar at the, you, at the top and you can slide it back and forth. If you have it 100% up, it's probably going everywhere, but you can adjust it. I like to keep it pretty high. I'm in the nine, like upper 90s. So, so there we go. I think I'll make this one a little fatter. Just color it in. This, this brush has a little bit of a textured edge, so you wanna keep your color drop threshold pretty high so that it'll fill in all the little bits of texture. And then this one needs a head. I'm gonna start with this same color, and then I'm gonna go darker, I think. Maybe darker, more saturated, almost like a maroon. Yeah, I'm staying in the same hue, but now I'm just going darker. That's another thing you can do with color, you know, like this, this bug is kind of um, pretty analogous. So it's staying within the same, like very close to the, very close on the same color wheel. We're just kind of staying on this side. Um, there we go. He's got a little head. I think I'll make it rounded right here. So I'll just kind of erase, round it out like that. Okay. Um... Okay, we need, we have to add another head. This one needs a head still. And I think I'm gonna add some little stripes to this one as well. So let's do this one's head. We gotta make another layer for that because again, we if it's touching any other shapes, we need to put it on its own layer. So I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. I'm gonna focus in on this bug. And let's do, I'll start with this blue. And then I think I'll just use a darker color. That's another way to experiment colors. Like start with a color that's already in there and then kind of just like try a darker color or a lighter version. We'll give them a little head like that. Cool, okay. Um, and then if I wanna give the body some stripes, I'm gonna need to put a layer between this blue body and these orange wings. So I'll tap on the layer that has the body and I'll tap the plus sign. So now I have a layer in between. And I'm gonna um, select this color and just choose a darker version, maybe a little cooler like that. So I'm going down into these blues here. Let me see how that, I think that looks really nice. So I'll just like kind of draw some stripes like that and fill them in. And maybe, maybe we'll do the butt. Now you could use a clipping mask to make this shape exactly the same size as the shape underneath it, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna have them be like slightly off. I like how this piece is like very imperfect, <laughs> you know, like it's it's kind of wonky and I think that's what gives a lot of personality. Um, okay, so we're almost ready to start doing the patterns, but I wanna add some line details first. So the little like antenna and some legs. So I'm gonna create a layer under everything else for that. So I'm just gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer and I'm going to move it to the very bottom, like that, okay? And I'm gonna use the same brush to just add some little antenna. Antennae, antenna, I don't know how to say the plural of antenna, or maybe it is plural, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, so I want some pretty dark colors, but I don't want them to be black, because I want them to be colorful. So maybe I'll just start with this purple and choose just like a darker version, maybe a little warmer. Again, you can experiment and see what you like. And I'll do like some little circle ones like that. So I'm just drawing a straight line, then curve around, and then keep curving and then fill it in like that. I think those are cute. And I'm gonna move this one a little bit. Whoops. There we go, there. And then on this one, there's a lot of blues, so I think I'm gonna start with a blue color for the antenna. I'm gonna just choose like a dark, dark blue like that. So just, I, choose, I chose that one and then I made it darker. I think that's good. So for this one, let's do some like S curve. And then I'll make the little little ball part <laughs> go the other way. So kind of like a little S curve and then come around. Fun. And then for this one, I'm gonna give it some like moth-like kind of antenna with little like fringy bits. <laughs> if you're ever not sure what to do, just Google or you know do an image search for pictures of insects 
And there's like so many different kinds of wings and bodies and antenna and you can just mix and match and do whatever you want. But this one kind of reminded me of a moth. So I'm gonna just do these like little kind of fringy antenna like that. They're just like a curved line. I do have to say that uh, Seti over on YouTube is a little worried that your tea's getting cold. I drank a little bit. It was really hot to begin with, so <laughs> I had to kind of let it cool down. I'm gonna put these a little closer together. It's a cute mug you have, Lisa. Oh, it is a cute mug. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You guys notice I have this really cool making art every day mug. <laughs> you can get this on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Wait, I don't even think you can see it. Ugh. Can you see that? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back a little more. Bring it back a little more. <laughs> okay, hold on. I was gonna drink it. <laughs> uh, this is so awkward showing a mug that's full of something. Oh. But you can see a picture of it uh, down in the description. There's me being salesy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is cute. Um, and I've been working on some really fun merch stuff. Like there's some t-shirts in there that are actually, I own a couple of them. I haven't like talked about it yet, but there's some t-shirts in there. And like my watch band, you guys see this? It's a pencil. Look, I designed this and this is something that I'm going to be offering in the future. It's just not ready yet. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to the bugs. Um, let's add some antenna to this one. Let's start with this color, and I'm gonna go a little bit darker, maybe a little more purpley. And let's do some just little swirly ones. Doop, like that. I feel like the antenna are almost my favorite part. Look at how cute they are, whoops. And then this one needs some legs, because the other ones kind of have wings covering where their legs would be, but. I'll draw just a little like L-shaped line going up from this peachy pink color shape on the body. And then two legs going down, one kind of like centered, and then another one kind of down at the bottom. Cute little legs. <laughs> okay, so we're all done with kind of like creating the shapes and adding like those little line details. Now we get to do the fun part, which is add all the patterns. So before we do that, do we have any questions um, from the comment section, Jeff? No, we're doing great. Although I do want to say that uh, Andrea over on YouTube right now, she is playing around with the brushes, making a design to go on a promo bag for her work. That oh she's my using goodness. For. Oh yeah, you'll have to, I hope, well, if you can share, I would love to see it. That's awesome. All right, um, so let's go ahead and start doing the pattern. So I'm going to start like maybe with the bottommost layer and then kind of work my way up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the layer. This is the one with layer one, it's the one with the bodies. Um, and then I'm gonna tap plus to create a layer right above that. And then I'm gonna set this layer to be a clipping mask. So to do that, you're gonna tap the layer and then tap right here where it says clipping mask. And what that, and, and you'll see like this little arrow, it'll like scooch over the thumbnail and have a little arrow pointing down. And basically what this means is anything we draw on this layer will only be visible if it's within the shapes that are on the layer right below it. So, you know, it won't appear in any of the white, it'll only appear within the shapes. So this is really great for adding patterns um, and texture and things to shapes because you can like, you can still edit this layer, um, but it's within the shape. So let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna choose, I'll start with this color and I'm just gonna choose maybe like a little bit redder, maybe a teeny bit darker. We'll see how that looks. Cool, okay, I think that's good. Let's zoom in. All right, so for this one, I am gonna choose the, let's see. What do we wanna start with? Let's do the disorderly dashes brush. And always like do a little test to see if it's the scale you want it. Like if you have the brush slider over here turned up really high, the scale of the pattern will be very large. If you have it turned down, the scale of the pattern will be really small. So just make sure it's where you want it to be. You get, you know, what it, whatever it looks like in this little preview is pretty much the size it's gonna be when you place it. So for these dashes, I kinda want, I want them to be diagonal. So instead of up and down like that. So to do that, all I have to do is just turn my canvas diagonally. And then as you can see, the brushes still only goes up and down, but since I turned my canvas, now they're diagonal. The brushes are oriented to whichever way your canvas is tilted. Or they're oriented to the iPad screen, so they'll always go up and down. So if you, all you have to do is turn your canvas to make it go which way you want. 
Okay, let's do the, cause we're focusing on one layer at a time. So we're working on these shapes. So this would be the blue body here. For this one, let's do, and for the patterns, you don't have to follow along and do the patterns I'm doing. You can choose whatever patterns you want. And there's a lot to choose from. There's 31 different patterns. Um, I'm gonna choose the bubbly bowls. And I'll start with this color again and I'll choose maybe like a lighter version of it this time. And I think that scale is a little bit too big for that one. So I'm gonna go down a little bit. That's cute, I like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down to this one here. Again, I'm gonna start by selecting this green. And again, we'll do like a lighter version of that color. When you go lighter, you can either go more saturated or you can go less saturated, or if you go straight up, it'll, I think that looks pretty good, but I'm gonna choose a different pattern. Let's do, I'm gonna do scrawling scribbles. It's kind of up near the top. And I like that scale already, so I don't need to adjust anything there. Look at how cute that's starting to look. And then this one, let's do, select that color. I'm gonna choose maybe a darker, more saturated version, maybe even darker. The darker you go, the more contrast you're gonna have between the pattern and um, the shape. So, you know, choose accordingly. And let's do zippy zigzags for this one. That one's fun. I think that's a little big, so I'm gonna go down. And I think that looks pretty good, I like that. All right, so we did our first layer of patterns and we're gonna move on to the next layer. So just like before, I'm gonna select, so it looks like I have um, just these little stripes on this layer, so this one will be pretty quick. I'm gonna create a new layer and then I'm gonna tap it and then I'm gonna choose clipping mask, make sure that little arrow is there. And the only thing on this layer is these shapes. So let's do, uh, let's see. I'm gonna do drippy drops. It's like little raindrops. I think that's a little bit big and not the right color. So I think I'll do a darker version of this color. That's fun. There we go. That's cute. I like the way that this one is kind of a vertical pattern and this one's kind of horizontal and they kind of contrast each other in that way. I like the way that looks. Okay, that's all that's on that layer. How are we doing with questions? Are you guys, how are you doing? <laughs> How's everything going, Jeff? <laughs> We're doing really good, actually. Um, there was just... <clears throat> doing good. It looks like someone was able to answer that question. Cool. So well, you were on a separate layer with the clipping mask? What yep. One? So just to, just to show you this, because this is important. Um, so we have our shapes that we drew. You can see these layers with the shapes and the thumbnail. Um, and then right above each one, we have another layer that's set to be a clipping mask. Like, I'll show you. Like, if I turn the clipping mask off on this layer... Like this is what's actually on the layer is like it goes off the edges like that. But when I turn on clipping mask, it clips, it clips that, um, you know, artwork to the shape in the layer below it. So that's why it's called a clipping mask. It kind of masks off the other stuff. <laughs> so, okay, let's do this one. This is for me, it's called layer two. It's the one with the like green wings and these orange wings. So I'm gonna tap, create a new layer right above that. Tap it and choose clipping mask. And now I can start doing some patterns. So this one reminded me of a ladybug. So I'm gonna choose the deviating dots brush. Deviating dots. I had a lot of fun naming these brushes. <laughs> like I like to I like to always give my brushes creative names and like these were all like imperfect. So I was kind of like giving them all like kind of like wonky names so <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that um okay let's check this size that's also the wrong color but I want it to be bigger like ladybug spot so I'm gonna go up pretty big with this one that's good I like that and for the color I'm gonna choose let's do like a darker darker green oh yeah I like that so I just I did a little darker a little more saturated so I'm going this way if you go you know, this this way gets more saturated. That way gets less saturated. And then just, there we go, easy. 
Okay, so for this one, let's choose our color. Let's do a lighter color. Maybe I'll even do something a little more peachy. Maybe even lighter than that. Ooh, that's fun. I like the way that these colors look with the blue. So we're talking about analogous colors on this one. This one is, um, these are almost complementary colors because they're orange and blue are complementary colors, meaning they're like opposite sides of the color wheel. Complementary colors usually look good together. Um, let's do, hmm, let's do the slinking scales for this one. Slinking scales. And for this one, um, I, I want to orient, well, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I also kind of want to change the orientation of the pattern. So again, I'm going to rotate it so that this shape is kind of straight up and down. Like here you can see the shape is angled. And this I'm going to turn it so it's more straight up and down so that the pattern kind of more closely follows the shape of the wing. And then I'll do the same for this one. So I'll turn it so like now the shape is straight up and down. There you go. And now you see how the pattern has that cool like directional effect happening. <laughs> um, okay, let's do this guy here. I think that's on this layer, right? No, this one is the green. So always check. So you can see on this layer, I have the little, this part of the green body. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. So I'll select that color, maybe choose something darker, a little bit more saturated. I'm going that way and down. And let's do the dots again, but I'm gonna do a different scale. So I'm gonna go down and do like little dots. So you can see like these two, you know, they use the same brush, but I did them in different scales, so it looks like very different. And then for this one, oops, I'm on the right layer. Let's choose Sprightly Sparkles as one of my favorite brushes. It's just so... I don't know, magic and happy. Um, and then maybe I'll start with this color and go a little darker, more saturated. I don't know, let's let's try that. Mm, I don't know, maybe I wanna go a little redder. Nah, so here's where I'm like playing around with colors, see what I like. That's kind of cool. It kind of looks a lot similar to that color, but I'm gonna go a little bit smaller with my scale, I think. There we go, fun. So there's a lot of contrast between this shape and this pattern on this one. Like some of them, you know, this one is not a lot of contrast. It's more subtle. And this one, the pattern really stands out. So it's up to you, you know, how you wanna do it. All right, we're almost done doing patterns. Like this bug is done. Um, I think this bug is done. I, I'm gonna leave the heads without pattern, just focus on the body and the wings. So all we have left to do is this guy down here. So that is this layer right here. For me, it's layer three. I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer, tap it, and then choose clipping mask. So now we have a clipping mask right above the layer with these blue wings. And I'll select that color. And I'm gonna choose a darker, a little bit more saturated version, maybe even darker than that. That's good. And then for this one, Let's choose Backdoor. Let's choose wonky wave. Never mind my alarm making noises. <laughs> and I think I'll just do it like that. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it this way. I'll see if Oops. A little bit smaller. Trying to decide which way I like. I think I actually like that better. Like orienting it to the side. All right. So as you can see, that was like super, <laughs> Never mind my alarm. <laughs> so as you can see, um, that was really easy to add um, patterns. Like we just added all these really like elaborate complex little patterns in no time at all. Um, and I have one more little thing to add to this, which is I wanna add some like overall texture. And I discovered this really cool little trick to do it. So I'll show you that next. So let's go ahead and go to the layers panel and I'm actually gonna go down here to the background color and I'm gonna turn it off. So just uncheck this little box and as you can see, like the background becomes transparent. Um, it's really hard to see, but that's okay. It's not gonna stay that way. We just need it to be, you know, we need only this on the screen because we're gonna use the copy all command. So if you take three fingers 
and you swipe down on your canvas, that will pull up the copy paste menu. And we're gonna choose copy all. And essentially what that does is it copies everything that's visible on your screen. So if the background is visible, it would have copied that too, but that's why we turned it off. And then we're going to uh, swipe down again with three fingers. Whoop. There we go. And choose paste. So now it's pasting everything onto a single layer. So everything that was visible, copied and pasted onto a single layer. So as you can see, I'm actually gonna move this. Here it is. So you can see all the bugs. That's all there is on that layer is all that. I'm gonna turn on the background color now. Okay, so this is everything on one layer flattened. Okay, so now we're going to use this to make our texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on alpha lock. I'm just gonna fill this and make it a solid color. So to do that, I'm gonna turn on alpha lock, which is a two finger swipe to the right. You can also tap the layer and you can see, you can choose alpha lock, you can select it that way, but you'll also see like a little checkerboard pattern there. And then I'm gonna fill it with a color and I wanna choose a kind of dark, I don't know, maybe I'll start with this blue. The color doesn't matter because we can, we're gonna adjust and play with the color. Um, so I'll just start with this blue that I kind of already have. And then I'm gonna tap the layer, I'm gonna choose fill layer. So now it's changed that entire layer um, to blue, basically. It just fills all those shapes with blue. Now we're gonna use a blend mode to make this color interact with the colors of all, everything below it. So if you go up here to the little N, and then you go to this um, kind of list here, these are the blend modes. And as you kind of scroll through, you know, it interacts with what's below it in different ways. Like they all have a different effect. We're gonna choose multiply, which has a darkening effect. So as you can see, it basically took that blue and like um, kind of mixed it with the colors below it, but also darkened it at the same time. There's like a whole mathematical explanation to what these do, but it's really boring. So <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, and now we're going to erase away some of this using one of the pattern brushes. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the list and I have this really cool brush called Sketchy Scratches. And this one is unique to all the other brushes because it has textured edges. Like the brush shape of all these is like a circle, but this one in particular is special. Um, and it's really good for like shading and adding texture and stuff. So I really love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that brush. And actually I should be selecting this as my eraser. So I'll tap and hold it. There we go, now I uh, have it selected as my eraser. So we're gonna be erasing. So again, select sketchy scratches as your eraser brush. And I don't know how big I want my scale to be yet, but basically I'm just gonna kind of go over and erase most of it away, like that. And this is basically getting the reverse of the pattern instead of like, we could have painted this on and it would have had a different look. And I really like the way it has like, you're getting the reverse of it and it looks almost like a, like a wood cut effect or something. And you can erase more spots away than others if you wanted like less of the texture, you know, maybe like, I kind of like how it's like darker on one side. It almost is like shading on that one. So however much you want to have, I think that looks pretty good. And I'll show you the before and after. So if I go to my layers, I can show you. So I just think it has a really cool effect. I'm gonna raise a little more away there. And it's just something unique. Like this is really cool too, but I think this is very unique. It looks really awesome. And I was saying like the color didn't matter because now um, this blue color, maybe it doesn't work as well with all of these bugs. So let's do this. We're gonna adjust the color a little bit. I'm gonna go up to my selection tool, and then I'm just gonna draw a selection around this bug. We'll start, we'll do one at a time. So I've selected that bug. Again, I'm on the layer with the texture that I just made. And then I'm gonna go up here to the adjustments menu, hue, saturation, brightness. And I can just play around with what hue, like it's really subtle, I'll zoom in a lot so you can see but you can see like the different hues kind of look different. So you can kind of see, like, let me see. I kind of like the way that the green looks on this one. You can make it more saturated or less saturated. You can even make it lighter or darker. I think I'll go more saturated, but I kind of like the way green looks on that one. Ooh, that one. Um, so let me go to the next one now. 
And you might not do this. You might not need to adjust the colors, but it's kind of nice to go in and fine tune. So again, I made a selection around that bug, hue, saturation, brightness, and I don't know. Ooh, I like that. Like this, I love the way that this is, I don't know, I think it's like a purpley color now and it interacts with this color. Like that looks really cool, I like that. And then this one, I don't know if I need to change this one at all. Kind of like the blue, but it's always good to experiment. Yeah, you know, I think I like the blue the best. I'm just gonna like leave that one. <laughs> and this one, I'm definitely gonna make it, I think a color, remember this one's kind of in the like pinky purples, like all of it. So maybe I'll try that color, oops. Take two. All right, there we go. Hue saturation brightness. Yeah, I'm kind of making it more of a purple color. Maybe more saturated, I don't know. Cool, I like that. Oh yeah, a little, little less purple, a little closer to red. Awesome. And that's all there is to it, you guys. It didn't take very long. We used some really simple shapes um, and the pattern brushes took like a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the really tedious part of doing this. Um, like I like this effect with the sketchy scratcher brush because it looks like you like that forever, which I, not my favorite thing. Like I like, I'm instant, I'm, a, I'm all about instant gratification. <laughs> so like sitting there and like coloring like this forever, like kind of makes my brain melt sometimes. So. Um, I love having technology kind of do some of that for me, <laughs> which is like one of the reasons I love making brushes. So, all right, you guys, let, before we wrap this up, let me see if you have any questions. Jeff, how are we doing? How do we do the copy all again? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, I'll turn this off. And so what you want to do, so if you were at this stage, you would go down to your layers, go to background color and turn it off. And then you take three fingers and swipe down on your screen and choose copy all. And then you take three fingers and you swipe down again and you choose paste. And then you have, um, I don't know where I just, did I paste it? Oh yeah, it's right here. <laughs> so then you have like a, basically you're flattening all the layers together. Um, and then putting them onto a single layer, but you're not affecting anything. So I use this copy all thing all the time. It's it's awesome. Like when you wanna flatten things, but you don't wanna like actually flatten your layers and merge them together. So that's how you do it. I'm gonna delete it. Okay, all right. Any more questions? Um, what else can we draw with these textures? Oh my gosh, so many things. <laughs> um, I mean, I can show you some of the, oh boy. And while you're, before we go on and leave this, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did want to say, because now a couple people have said this, and I have to say it, um, this would be amazing as a repeating pattern. Oh, totally would be. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, I, if you um, want to learn how to do something like put make this into a repeating pattern, I have a tutorial. Um, let me pull it up really quick and I'll show you. But this would totally be, especially like with more little dots around it. Oh, yeah. I Sounds could not. Like we'll have this on spoon flower later today. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. So... Let me get the repeating pattern tutorial because it's super handy. It's this one, how to make repeating patterns of Procreate. It takes you through like starting with like a really simple pattern with geometric shapes into more complex patterns with multiple layers. And I have this really cool repeating pattern tech tester, which like is how I made all these brushes. Like I use this pattern tester to make all these brushes and test out the patterns and make sure they looked good, um, you know, at different scales and everything like that. So I recommend this this tutorial if you're interested in making your own patterns. Um, but yeah, this would totally be a super fun repeating pattern. Another question, Jeff? Um, those are what we've got. Cool, well, I'll show you a little bit more. Well, and, and I, I'm only gonna repeat it because they just, they, they've asked it a couple times, you know, you kind of answered it. Do the patterns for the brushes, um, do they line up for repeating patterns if you, if you use them in the background? 
out? Um, I think I know what you're asking. Let me, just let me see. Um, oh, you mean like to make a repeating pattern out of it? Yeah, if it was the background of a repeating pattern. No, like they have their own set repeat and it would be really hard to line that up with the edge of a, a pattern. So probably not, but um, you can make things to make into patterns. <laughs> like that's a little complex, but yeah, like, and another thing I wanted to show you about the brushes, which I didn't mention, um, let me actually just make a new canvas really quick. Uh, the other way that you can control them is, let me pick, I'll just pick this one. So the pattern will repeat forever at any scale. So I can fill up this whole thing like that. I can make it really small. Oh boy, it will take a long time. But if I wanted to sit here and fill this all in, it would just repeat forever. But what will happen if you lift your pencil up and try and start again, it's not gonna repeat. So you have to make sure to do one continuous stroke if you wanna fill in an area. So that's the only other thing I didn't think I mentioned about it before, but yeah, they'll repeat forever. Any other questions? Think we're good? I'm just going through. And if you guys have um, other questions that are not about uh, this, you know, feel free to ask. We'll do a little bit of Q&A at the end. So I'm happy to stick around and answer some questions for you guys. Can you show how you would layer the patterns to make a new pattern? Sure. I'll go back to that one. So this is really, um, this is a fun way to experiment. Like one of the ones that I really, let's do, un, this is ungraded grid. I think I'll make it like that. So I'll, I really like this pattern. I don't know why. It's so simple, but it really makes me happy. So I'll just fill that in. And then um, there's, a, there's a few ways you can do it. Like you could, like if I get the deviating dots or something, I could just layer that on top. Um, you could do it in a different color. Like we'll choose like a lighter blue like that. But what I think would be really fun for this is if I use a blend mode to make these patterns interact with each other. So I did the grid. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply. You could try whatever blend mode you want, but and then maybe I'll make the size really big. And then I'll layer like that. And this is really cool because, you know, it kind of makes the, let me try with a different color, like a contrasting color. Like yellow, eh. okay, I think this blue is hard because it's so dark. Let me make it a little brighter. Some, sometimes the colors don't interact very much. It depends on the color you have it. So I'm just gonna make this lighter. Okay, and now, there we go. So that's a little bit easier to see. You can see like where the yellow overlaps, it makes it turn green. Um, let me do that again. In fact, let me get another color. And I'm gonna choose pink, like a magenta. And I'll do a third one. Now I'm just having fun. Oops, and I turn the multiply blend mode on on this one. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I'll choose a different one. Uh, I don't know. Oh, let's do a stripe, maybe diagonal. Nope, oh, must not have selected it. Okay, don't mind me, I'm just playing around. <laughs> So now I'm layering a third pattern on. It's getting a little crazy, but you could, you know, play around with stuff and, you know, see what kind of different effects you get. That's kind of cool. I think that's really fun. So yeah, just play and experiment, layer patterns on each other. You can even like, oops, uh, I don't know. Okay, let me, um, you can even like layer the same pattern on itself. So like this one with the stripes. You could do a diagonal this way and then turn it diagonal the other way and make kind of like a, like that could be an ice cream cone, super easy. Or like even just as like a grid and then turn it all the way around. And now you have a grid out of this one as well. So it's fun to experiment with the directions of 
you know, the way that the brushes go. Like this one also does really fun when you layer it. Because then now you're starting to get like a cool, almost like a cross hatching shading and you can keep layering and layering and layering to get darker and darker. So you could do that, like some shading with that one. It's pretty cool. Cool. <laughs> There's so many fun things that you could do with these. I could probably go on for a really long time. Um, I showed this in my, the teacup tutorial, but it makes me really happy. So this leaf one, let's choose a green because green. So this leaf, you can do that, which is like a cool, like out, like it's a line art kind of a leaf. It's like lines. But then if you fill in the middle, you get this other leaf, you know, like you get a whole different pattern just by like filling in between. Um, another one that I was having fun with was, where is it? The dot, the drippy drips. Why can't I find it? There it is, drippy drops, there we go. So let me do like a pink. So I'm gonna do diagonal. Actually, I'm gonna do it upside down. Well, there's nothing on this page, so it doesn't matter. Okay, make it bigger. And then I, I don't know, this was fun. And I got the imperfect inker and I was like adding a little, the other half, and then they became like little hearts. I don't know. It's fun to, and you can add to patterns and make them your own. And because I have this, you know, this, this inker brush, it's like the same exact brush. So you can like add to them and it matches and stuff. So it's just fun to play around with and see kind of what you can create using just a pattern brush to start with. So cute little, cute little hearts. <laughs> Anyways, do you have any more questions, Jeff? Can you show us anything else you've drawn with these? Uh, sure. Um, let's see. I think most of what I've drawn is on the website, but this is another little piece that I drew, um, like dishes and cups. I think like anything that might have surface design on it, like dishes and fabric and things like that, that might have a pattern on them. They like, they lend themselves really well to adding patterns. So, um, like look, the dots became like the dots in the colander and like, this isn't what water looks like, but I think it looks really cool. Like it's fun to like play around with it like that. Um, you know, this little house I kind of showed you guys earlier, I added like lots of pattern to even, even, I can't zoom in on that, but even this is a pattern. Like I just kind of added these little stripes and erased part of it and it became the shutters on that. Um, you know, this is the little sailboat that you draw in the tutorial. I also show you how to manipulate patterns. So this was also the stripe and then we use liquefied to kind of push it up. And um, then you get these like curving stripes, the wood. The wood one is also another favorite. I kind of showed you that in the, the camping scene. So yeah, there's, there's a lot. And I have some more pictures of stuff that I've drawn. So here's some more teacups that I was doing. I've done a lot of teacups. See, there's a little heart pattern that I did <laughs> and the little like lattice kind of thing and adding flowers to that leaf. So yeah. All right, unless we have any more questions, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Oops, go away. Okay, stop. Mm. What's going on? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, technical difficulties. So thank you guys so much. I would, as always, I would love to see what you guys have made um, using this tutorial or with the brushes in general. Um, but if you're, if you're following along in the, this tutorial, use the hashtag uh, BB pattern bugs, and then we can see everybody's artwork that they made, all their little fun pattern bugs. Um, and then of course, tag me Bardo Brush, you know, at Bardo Brush is my Instagram account. I'm also at Lisa Bardo, that's like my personal account. Um, but I love seeing what you guys make. It really, it really fills me up. <laughs> it's so fun. I like to scroll. I'm like, oh my gosh, look. And, and I feel like with this particular tutorial, there's so much creativity like you could do, like you could kind of take it and run with it and like go f have fun with the shapes and have fun with the colors and have fun with the patterns and like create something completely different. Like we didn't even add a background, but you could add a background too with patterns and colors and stuff like that. So like um, this, I, I made this last night, <laughs> this like frame and I just kind of like layered patterns and I used the blend mode and it was super fun and super easy. So there's a lot that you could do with it, but please tag. 
Um, again, I just want to mention really quick uh, making art every day because um, I, it's a really great thing to join if you want to um, grow your art making practice or if you want to just learn how to draw like following along with this and just getting yourself to draw more is the best way to progress in your skills. So Making Art Every Day is a series of uh, not just daily drawing prompts, but we also have like weekly goals. So you can shoot like we kind of like, if you're only gonna draw one thing this week, try this thing. And then we also have monthly projects if you wanna like do something um, like a bigger project and just kind of focus on your attention on something a little bit bigger over time. Um, and then of course I send out motivational emails every week and we have a really great community. So you can find out more about it at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E and it's totally free. And we've been doing some super fun stuff lately. Like we've been doing, we just, where this week we've been doing sketchbook journals and I have a sketchbook journal that's a procreate file that you can download and fill it out. And it's been really fun seeing people um, journal entries. So definitely check it out. Okay. We're going to take a couple questions. If we have any, just kind of like general questions. Um, so Jeff, how are we with questions? We got some questions. Okay. All right. Uh, first up, uh, I wanted to ask if there's any default size you'd recommend for making pattern designs. I watched your tutorial on how to make patterns on Procreate. Well, it really depends on um, what the application of the pattern is going to be. So if you're going to be like putting it on fabric, um, generally you want your like a print, the print resolution is 300 DPI or pixels per inch. Like you want one inch to have 300 <laughs> pixels in it. Um, so I, I generally just try to go as big as I can. Like if I, you know, depending on how big I want it to be, I have a resolution calculator. Oh, I should have a better link to this. I just know the link. Jeff will post a link and I'll show it to you really quick. I need to reorganize my site a little bit better. I, uh... The resolution calculator, so it's bartobrush.com slash resolution. And basically it's a calculator that doesn't seem to be working. I'll work on that. But, okay, I don't know why. It, it There should be little things that you can input. <laughs> I'll fix it. But um, you put in what size you want to print and it'll tell you what um, what size your canvas should be. So that's kind of what you want to think about. Like how big you want to print it is kind of what scale you should be. Um, so like for a fabric, you know, how big is one repeat? Is it like, you know, is it like five inches? It's going to, is it going to repeat at like 12 inches or whatever? So that's, you know, and then do it at 300 DPI from there. i to figure out why that's not working. Um, yes, <laughs> that answers the question. Um, what should I do when my disk space is full on my iPad and I'm wanting to get a newer one? So what's the like best value, long lifespan, what iPad should I be looking at, Lisa? Oh man, well, it really depends on, you know, how much space you've used up, you know, whatever. Okay, so when I get a new iPad, I don't transfer everything over that probably doesn't work for everybody because I just keep my old iPad and I like anyways the way I do it probably isn't the best but I have I think I have the what do, oh no I have the one terabyte now because I wanted to get the 16 gigabytes of RAM so I don't have a storage issue but before that one I think I had like 512 gigabytes um, so, I mean, look at what you used before, and if you're going to keep at that pace, you know, filling up your iPad like that, then, you know, I would probably err on the side of getting more storage if you can, you know, if it's, if it's in your budget too. So when you're buying an iPad and I have a video about, you know, um, I have a video about what iPad you should get and it takes you through what decisions you should make. So the first thing is, you know, think about what, how much RAM you want to have, like, how many layers you're gonna get. And then, you know, basically I say like, get as big a size as you can, as you can afford. Um, and <laughs> it's hard to balance because you wanna get like a big size and you wanna get enough storage, but um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you have an a, a opinion on this one, Jeff? I feel like I'm blathering. 
So, I mean, really the iPads, and what's fun is, is we're going to hopefully be testing the new iPad Air, mm -hmm. but really it's about looking at storage. You know, um, I fill up one that's at 64 gigs, Lisa rocks a terabyte iPad. And so the big thing is, is that one, you want to get the most amount of RAM that your mm -hmm. budget can afford with the most amount of storage your budget can afford. And it's about your budget. So um, the iPad Air is truly amazing, you guys. It's what I use and love. Lisa uses an iPad Pro, um, so that way she can always keep pushing what the you know Max is available yeah. to her. I as tend to an max things out. <laughs> always. So yeah, I mean that, that's kind of our opinion, you guys. Is RAM matters more. Get as much space as you can afford because everybody's budget is different. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. You you said that a lot more eloquently than I did. <laughs> I was trying to get there. <laughs> Do you have another question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, would you make a tutorial on how to make digital stickers for digital planners? Oh my gosh, I have a tutorial on how to make digital stickers. Not specifically for planners, but you could... I, I've never done dig, the whole digital planning thing. Um, the digital planner thing. Thing. Um, but I assume like if you just send them out as like images with transparent background, like as a PNG, um, you could import them into your planner. So this is a tutorial. If you want to draw digital stickers, this is how to do it. And we take you through drawing all these like really fun little doodly stickers. And if you just like turned off the background like we did with the bugs um, and then exported that out as a PNG, which is a file that supports transparent background, you should be able to import them into your digital planning software, I assume. I've never done it before. But um, check out this tutorial. It's also just really fun. <laughs> Another question? Oh, someone just asked, can you use a thumb drive to store files on? Uh, um, no. But you can, can use you? a hard drive. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I think all the iPads, do they all use USB? They, you can use the USB-C yeah, hard drive. Yeah, I think all iPads now support using a USB-C drive and um i've never done that before but it is a thing that you could do so i don't know how procreate though like interfaces with an external hard drive i, I don't they don't have like a file have to yeah you could you could like archive stuff to an external hard drive probably um, but i don't think you can work off of one i've never tried that but i don't see how it works because it doesn't have a file no, it's, it's system all storage yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but you could export out like your finished work and stuff to an external hard drive, I guess. Another question? We get all the questions. Uh, we've got all the questions. I really like this one. I think we even did a little animation in this. Super fun. I've got a lot of tutorials, so definitely head to this part of my website. I just gave it a little refresh. I added my Skillshare classes and kind of made this look a little better, but you can go through. I have a lot of tutorials, and this is the best place to, you know, I have my YouTube channel, of course, but um, I have more tutorials here, like this written tutorial I just did um, about how to draw a pig, and we have little pictures. So it's not a video, so it wouldn't be on YouTube but it's on my website. But even the videos have additional, you know, additional links and things like that, like the Imperfect Patterns one, show you the art that we did and stuff like that. So go check it out. What do we got? What set would you recommend Jesus. for realistic pencils? Oh, well my pencil box, of course. <laughs> um, I, may, I have a brush set called Pencil Box and I work really hard to make this look as realistic as possible. I mean, you even did a huge update last year. Yeah, I did. Um, pencil box. I did a really big update on it recently, or semi-recently. <laughs> it feels recent. I did it. It was a lot of work. I'm not trying to add it to my cart. Um, anyways, so you can go and check it out. Um, and there's a lot of different brushes. And some really cool, like some of my favorite brushes in this set are these quick scribble brushes that, remember how I was talking about how I don't like to do this forever? This does that for you. Like, it just, like... I guess I could show you, but, um, here, I'll just show you real quick. I feel like I should just 
do a live where I just show you my brushes and you guys can ask questions about them. I bet you guys would like that. Tell me if you want that and I'll do it. But look at that. It looks like you spent forever coloring that in, but you didn't. You just went like this. <laughs> um, that's, that's one of my favorite parts. And even like I have this soft one that it's like you drew it softly and colored it in. Ugh, so satisfying. So I highly recommend this brush set. If you want to do like colored pencil style art, there's even like a curly scribble and different textures and things like that. And then of course, like regular pencil brushes. So it's fun. Check it out. Pencil box. Do you have a Patreon that we can support you with? Um, I don't have a Patreon, but I am <laughs> I feel like I've been saying this forever. I am going to be coming out with um, a way that you guys can support me. I'm getting closer to it. Hopefully end of May. End of May. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Um, but it would be like something similar to Patreon, but not on, it's like, I don't want it really to do it on any social media platform, um, Like, but I want to do it on my own thing. So it's take, it's a lot of work to put it together, but um, some of the things that I'm hoping to include in this um, membership type thing are, I want to, I want to put my tutorials on it. So they'll be like off of YouTube ad free, more course like with additional resources, like getting to download the procreate files, um, color palettes, like lots more resources for the tutorial. Um, also like doing like more live Q and A's like this, um, like smaller group lessons, I guess, where it's like a zoom or something like that. Um, I have like a special like bonus brush set for members that I want to include. And then of course, like a community, like a community that's like not on another social media platform. I know a lot of people ask about that. They're like, hey, I want to be on a group, but I don't want to be on Facebook. So I'm excited for that to happen. And if there's anything else that you guys would want out of something like this, feel free to reach out to me um, because I want to know what you guys want um, because that's, that's all, that's what I care about. <laughs> like I care about giving you guys what you want. So feel free to let me know um, if you're interested in this. And also if you have any requests for something, uh, a feature or something like that, that we can do as a part of a, a, a membership. So I, and I have like branding and everything. Like it's so, it's so cute. It's so cute. We're so close. <laughs> all right, you guys, I think that we are all done with questions. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you again so much for joining me. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot. Um, I make awesome brushes for Procreate through my uh, company, what business, I guess, Bardo Brush. <laughs> um, and then I also run Making Art Every Day. Um, we will be back for another live tutorial soon. So please be sure to subscribe. Um, and happy art making. Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs>